Today, I will show you a few fun texts available to Kazuha, like how to skip his plunge animation, infuse of Guopa, and more. But most importantly, I will try to clear some misconceptions on how it works as I noticed a bit of confusion around. This video might get a bit nerdy, but the talk is so necessary for Kazuha. He's considered one of the best pool values in the game, and he can be, but only if played correctly and understood. For the first tip, let's talk about something many players are still unsure about. The difference between Swirl and Infusion. Technically the latter should be called Elemental Absorption, but for simplicity's sake I'll stick with calling it Infusion. It's just easier to understand and to spell. Kazuha, via Skill and Burst, can infuse an element. However, both Viridescent Veneer and his Elemental Damage buff are activated by Swirling. Not by infusing an element, but Swirling an element. And that's different, very different. Swirling happens when an emo reacts with an aura, with the result of an elemental damage hit. The respire on the enemy, I apply an emo, a pyro damage hit will happen. This will activate a very distant and Kazuha buffs. However, if I infuse pyro with my skill or burst, that doesn't mean I'm swirling the element. I can use it to apply the element and then swirl it, but the infusion itself does not. If I apply pyro to Kazuha and then I infuse my skill with it, I'm not getting any buff. I'm infusing, I'm not swirling. If you're focusing on one element, you are hardly making any mistakes with Kazuha. But if we take a more complex example, we can more clearly see the problem. To see it, however, there are two rules that are very important. Rule number one, infusion has a priority list in case more than one element is nearby. For most animal characters, Kazuha included its Pyro, Hydro, Electro, Cryo. Pack for short. Rule number two, when his infusions hit enemies, the infused element will get applied before the animal part is out. Meaning that if I use a hydro infused skill on someone, I will first apply hydro and then animo, which is quite convenient because we can get a swirl out of that. Let's have a classic example where you're playing a pyro DPS. It could be anyone. For some reason I picked pyro Jinian and we're coupling them with Saint Chu or Yellen. This team is commonly referred to as Pyro VV Vape. Pyro is the on fielder trying to vape, Hydro provides the vapes, and Animo will buff both or at the very least Pyro. With Bennett, everything is easier because inside of his burst, Pyro will be applied to you constantly. And if the enemy has Hydro applied to it, I can infuse my skill with Pyro, but I'm still swirling just Hydro because that's what is on the enemy and that's what I'm swirling. So in AoE we will fix this by applying different elements on each enemy and get the easiest double swirl possible. On a single target instead, we have to remove the Hydro and then apply Pyro, so that each one gets a swirl reaction. A way to do this is to have Bene set up, Hydro in the enemy and use Kazuha's hold version of the skill, simply because it applies more Animo than the top version, so it's more likely to remove the entire Hydro aura. Coming down, the infusion that we got from being under Bennett's burst will apply Pyro to the enemy. And then, the animal part will come out and swirl it. Going to check if we did this right, we will see both a Pyro damage buff and a Hydro damage buff. This is called Double Swirl. Every element you see on enemies, which is called an aura, has a duration or value to it. When we react with something, we consume that aura. What we're simply doing is make sure to consume it all. This however happens on Zinshu, happens on Yellen and many more, but it will never happen on a character that has a natural Hydro Aura, like one of those annoying local legends or a Hydro Slime. They have an infinite amount of Hydro Aura. So no matter how much Animo we apply, the Aura will always be there. If we infuse Pyro with skill or burst, it's just an infusion. You are never seeing a Pyro Swirl, just Pyro damage because of the infusion. And I hope that's all clear, but if you still have a doubt, feel free to comment, I will read and answer each one of them. Now, as you might know, there are characters who are able to swirl on their own or with a combination of other characters. You know how Sucros or Farzan can quote-unquote Guoba swirl by using their skills on Guoba when he breathes his fire? Kazuha cannot do that. Nor can most other Animo units. But you can actually still Guoba infuse. Since the God of Stove applies Pyro to himself and Pyro is the highest in the pack priority list, 
you can basically guarantee a pyro infusion in most situations. Imagine being against an Abyss Herald. Your Bennett is dead, or not there, or his burst is not ready, so we can't apply pyro to ourselves. And we can't apply it to someone with a shield either. But we can still infuse Katsua's skill or burst with pyro to help us deal with the shield, just by timing it with a Guoba attack. By using the elemental sight, we can see the timing in which Guoba is affected by pyro. It's somewhat brief, but very doable. This tip just goes to show how creative you can get with Katsuo's infusions, especially to deal with particular enemies or by using the environment. A showcase against a cryo Herald would have been so much better here, but did you know that there are actually none in Taivat right now? You can only find them in the Archon Quest or in Abyss. Maybe next map we'll have some. As we mentioned earlier, the amount of anima applied via hit skill embers matters, and can also allow you to get a double swirl with just one instance of animo. The two most common examples are Electrocharged and Frozen. With Electrocharged, both Electro and Hydro coexist as auras on the enemy, and provided enough of both, new elements that come into contact with an Electrocharged aura can react with both, at the same time. Kazuha will need to use his Burst or Hold skill for a stronger anima application very often here as well. Doing so will result in two swirls. Not having enough of the aura or animo being applied might just result in an electro swirl instead. Do note that this is different from the infusion priority list we talked about earlier, otherwise this scenario will trigger a hydro swirl instead. I will link a table in the description with more details for people that want to check it out. And by the way, this scenario is the reason why, even though there can be electro charged on the thunder manifestation, you still cannot buff or swirl hydro. Let's make an example for Freeze now. You are playing nicely with Yellen. We definitely want to buff both elements here. How do we do that? Frozen acts as a cryo aura, but with enough hydro, an hydro aura can coexist with it, even if we can't see it. In theory, three things can happen. We have Frozen, but not enough hydro. Cryo swirl will happen. We have Frozen and enough hydro, but a low amount of animo is applied. Hydro swirl will happen. We have Frozen, enough Hydro, and strong Animo is applied, but Cryo and Hydro will happen at the same time. Here, Animo depletes the underlying Hydro Aura first and reaches the Frozen Aura, reacting with it. So in practice, we just need to apply more of all three elements. And if you're wondering how to do this against a boss, well, you can't because the Frozen Aura will just disappear, so you have to swirl them one by one. As you probably know, you can either tap or hold Kazuo's skill, but you can actually get a midway effect between a tap and a hold skill. If you slightly hold it, but not all the way, you will get a pulling effect stronger than the tap version, but the cooldown will still be just 6 seconds. So the cooldown of the tap. You can notice it in the amount of items I managed to pull from the same spot. So we're basically enjoying many advantages of the hold with the cooldown of the tap. This stack is useful in runs where you need as much crowd control as possible while also casting it as often as possible. And a very rare use, but Kazuo can avoid the plunge attack and descend faster by opening and closing the glider. This is mostly used by speedrunners to achieve small advantages. For example, you can do it to delay freedom sworn buff in long rotations or avoid applying unwanted elements in precise setups. Another great and more general use is in Freed's teams where doing a plunge attack would cause a shutter reaction, disrupting the frozen status on the enemy. It's usually not a problem to do so, but only if it's possible to reapply Hydra right away and freeze them again. The example used would be reapplying VV during an Ayaka burst without freeing the enemy with a shutter. This glide trick can be actually used together with another tech. It's possible to cut the animation of his plunge drastically by doing it just before touching the ground. But unfortunately, no matter how much I tried, I realized it just looks cool and doesn't really give you any advantage. The animation is faster, but you have to wait longer to start it, so you end up basically doing a more complicated and unnecessary plunge. But it does look cool. And continuing on, let's see some other weird tech I found while researching this video. Some might have value in the future or in particular teams. You can totally swap out of his fifth normal attack, and the attack will still happen. This hit also has quite the hit lag, which means you can Dragon Strike off of it, but it's quite hard to do without movement speed buffs. He can move the following, 
Alois Bombs, Baron Bunny, Klee Bombs, Novilet and Hydro MC Pulse, Yugwe, Kirara Bombs, Sayu Burst, Shiori Dolls, Linis Cat and Guobam. And even use them for a pressure plate or repositioning in combat. He can skill while climbing or gliding to regain stamina. He can keep his plunge effect for longer if interrupted by a bubble or frozen. And he can also make enemies take full damage if they're light enough. There are actually quite a few more things we could talk about, especially because I didn't touch any danger related stuff where he can actually play and make for very interesting teams. But just that would take an entire video. Good luck to anyone pulling and thank you so much for watching until now. I hope you enjoyed and make sure to comment for any doubt you might still have on him. See you next time.